Good afternoon students. So we'll start the block 5, the next chapter of block 5. First chapter was over. We'll start with block 5's next chapter that is organizational conflict. So let me first tell you what is organizational conflict. Organizational conflict means there may be conflict between two individuals or conflict between two groups. So why this conflict arises in any organization? What is the reason behind? Reason is if there is incompatibility between individuals or incompatibility between the groups. So that is the basic reason for which there is a conflict in organization. So why this incompatibility is seen between individuals or groups? It is always directed towards achievement of goals. If there is incompatibility between two individuals, then one person is a block in front of the achievement of the goal of the other person and also the other way around. And it is also in same in the case of groups also. To achieve some organizational goals, one group hinders the growth of other group to achieve the goals. So this is organizational conflict. And we will know what is conflict, why this conflict arises, and what are the types of conflict? So one by one we'll discuss all this. Conflict depends upon perception of other person or other group. So here perception means intention. Intention of other person or other group. So what are, what can be the types of intentions? So that also we will discuss intentions of people. So let us start with what is organizational conflict. It is internal misunderstanding or disagreement that can occur between colleagues or leaders. So conflict may not be within a, within a department between different colleagues. Conflict may also be within leaders or authorities. So when there are many people working in one organization with different backgrounds, different value system and different upbringing, when everybody comes together to achieve certain goal in the organization, so variety of people act and interact with each other. So during this interaction, so there may be clash of opinion, clash of views, clash of ego. There are so many things. So interpersonal relationship decides the basis for conflict. If the interpersonal relationship is good, then conflict is less. If interpersonal relationship is not good, conflict is more. 
so conflict may arise at any level may it be at departmental level may it be at the top level may be at the bottom level may be within two different departments may be within two different groups or teams may be between two individuals so various types of conflicts are there and another type of conflict is also there that is intra individual conflict so conflict within someone within someone within one person when he is confused when the person cannot decide what to do that is intra individual conflict so let us start with what is organizational conflict so this kinds of disagreements can lead to a lack of cohesion and collaboration in the workplace so if there is a conflict there will be lack of collaboration between people inside the workplace so which is ultimately affecting the work ultimately affecting the achievement of goal when employees do not get along with each other or disagree it can make it challenging to get everyone aligned with the company's goal so everybody is affected everybody face the challenges to achieve the goal due to conflict so conflict should be avoided in the organization then the causes of organizational conflict why there is a conflict in the organization so first and foremost is lack of communication unclear communication or that is uh, there may be uh, too much communication or too li li less communication very little communication or maybe bossism bossism and author uh, showing the authority to other people so communication is a very important and key factor which causes this organizational conflict maybe insufficient communication maybe noisy communication maybe uh, using jargons in the communication so often conflicts occur when there is a disruption in the flow of communication at work so what is disruption of communication disruption in the flow of communication whatever the authority wants to communicate to different people in the organization may not reach to the people as it is the meaning of communication may change while it is reaching to the bottom so that is disruption in the flow of communication that means that is some lacuna during the flow of communication so that the exact meaning which the authority wants to communicate to the lowest level is not reaching as it is so here what happens the authority wants to communicate something but the employees understand it differently so there will be a conflict in understanding when someone lacks in the information necessary to do their job they may come to faulty conclusions so here there is ambiguity in role ambiguity in goal so people do not understand what the exact job they have to do there is goal ambiguity ambiguity and role ambiguity as well as so likewise if an employee misinterprets something their colleague or manager says to them this can also lead to internal conflict in the workplace suppose different people understand different thing whatever the authority suppose the authority has communicated something but different employees understand it differently so there is a there is every chance of conflict between those employees someone understand something and someone someone else understand some some other thing 
so there will be a problem during doing the work so this is why it's important to be mindful of how people might interpret what you say or do at work so the communication has to be very clear and transparent transparency in communication is very much required to avoid organizational conflict then the another a uh, cause of organizational conflict is different personality types so people with various backgrounds come together in a organization they have their own value system they are they have their own upbringing they belong to different different types of families so they have their own style of living life so everybody who has come to the workplace they are already grown ups and they have their set up mindset and values and ethics and opinion towards life so different personality types when they come together and work together they try to impose their value system on others because they are already adults so what they do they try to impose that their value system is correct and others value system is not correct so this is where conflict arises so while having a mix of personality types can help a company gain new perspectives and ideas it can also lead to organizational conflict so various background people will come together and work with each other so their mindset do not match their values do not match their opinions do not match so which gives rise to organizational conflict encouraging people to understand each other and their work process may help prevent disagreements so what is the role of organization here organization must encourage the employees to understand each other and to understand their work process so different employees do the same work in different way because their education is different their their schooling is different their college is different their uh, upbringing is different so organization has the responsibility to encourage people to understand each other and their work process to avoid conflict then ambiguous expectations what is ambiguous expectation unclear expectations unclear target unclear goal unclear role that is ambiguous expectation when managers make their expectations for employees unclear this can lead to conflict in the workplace so if employees are not clear about their role what they what they are expected to do in the organization what what should be their uh, result where they are heading so th their job description so if their role clarity is not there then employees are confused to uh, confused during the work process so slowly it leads to frustration of the employee because if someone doesn't understand his or her work properly how that person will perform and if he doesn't perform well the boss is there he should take care of it if the boss doesn't take care of it and doesn't make him understand his work properly then that frustration level will go up and it will be uh, the it will directly impact 
the performance of the employee. And when the employee's performance is not good, he himself is frustrated and the boss is frustrated with him also. So, employees may grow frustrated or confused about what they are supposed to be doing to succeed. So, this is especially apparent if they think they are doing something correctly and their manager sends it back with unhelpful feedback. So, unhelpful feedback comes from the manager. Rather, he should help the employees to understand the role clearly. If it doesn't help, then the employees will be frustrated. Then another cause is unclear responsibilities. So unclear responsibility means accountability. In order for a workplace to thrive, it's important for departments to have a level of accountability. So people should take responsibility. Either they take on their own or they should be accountable by the organization. If any department or any employee doesn't have the accountability for some work, he will not do it properly. Accountability means he has to answer to someone. He is answerable for not doing the work or for doing the work. So, if one organization has to thrive, it's very important for departments to have a high level of accountability. Conflict can occur when an issue happens and no one takes responsibility for it. Suppose there is a mistake happens in any department. So nobody comes forward to take the responsibility of that mistake. So organization should either ask the employees for accountability or employees by their own or authorities by their own should take the responsibility of what they are doing, not doing or any kind of conflict or mistake in the organization or any issue which comes up in the organization. Employees can get into disagreements over who is responsible for which task. So here again ambiguous role and goal. This is why it's important for everyone to have clearly defined roles in the workplace, as I said. Then unfair distribution of resources. This leads to conflict as well. So suppose there is workspace in the organization. So workspace has to be distributed properly. Everybody has to be given one space to sit and work. Suppose for one department, the organization has given the number of uh, number of cubicles as the number of equal to the number of employees. But for another department, less number of cubicles are allotted for the number of employees who are working. So what happens? The employees will sit in groups. Like for example, two to three employees will sit in one cubicle. And in another department, for each employee, there is one cubicle. So what happens? Here there will be department conflict. So unfair distribution of resources. Let us take another example. If the sales department is getting a significant portion of the budget, the other departments might feel like their employer favors the sales department. So what happens? A kind of enviousness or jealousness comes within the employees of another department. 
because they feel that the sales department is more privileged than the HR or finance department. So here there would be a conflict between the departments and employees will ultimately be dissatisfied with the distribution of resources. So here what happens, a sense of favoritism comes. One department may feel privileged and the other department may feel that that, that department, the sales department uh, is getting more priority than our department. The sense of favoritism can lead to lower employee morale since people might feel like they are not getting the recognition and resources they deserve. So apart from department also, individuals may also feel like that. Support individuals with the same designation. There are two individuals and they both have same designation. Suppose for example, one individual has got a room or uh, one uh, properly designed room with uh, uh, sitting arrangement and uh, internet and AC and all. Every facility is given to that employee. Another employee with same capability and same designation, he or she is allotted a cubicle to sit with others, to share the resources with others. So there would be conflict between these two employees who are having same designation and same qualification, same capability, everything. So a sense of favoritism leads to jealousy. So there arises conflict between these individuals because employees feel they are not getting the proper respect and recognition in the organization. So aiming to balance resources can help prevent concerns about favoritism. So here again, it is the responsibility of the organization to balance the resources of the organization equally among the employees. If someone is having the same qualification and same experience and the same capability as another employee, they both should be treated equally. So whose responsibility is that? Organization's responsibility is that. Then how to manage organization's conflict? So these are some of the points, certain points by which we can know how the organization's conflict can be managed. Be mindful for, of your action. So it is for the individuals. This point is for the employees of the organization, for individuals of the organization. So while interacting with the colleagues, everybody should be mindful of how people might perceive what someone is saying. Suppose one employee is cracking a joke. It may not be taken as a joke by other employees. Someone from the team members may feel offensive regarding this joke. So employees are to be, they should be very careful while talking to the colleagues because that is a professional institution or professional, professional setup that is not someone or that is not a hangout place. So everybody should maintain professional relationship and also talk in a professional way to others because it might 
hurt the sentiment of someone else so if it's important that you should understand what kind of behaviors are appropriate in the workplace so that is very important that professionalism should be maintained at the workplace which type of behavior is accepted and which type of behavior is not accepted that has to be taken care of by each and every employee then make an effort to go through your employee handbook with your team to ensure you all have a mutual understanding of how to act at work so in the employee handbook everything is written so everybody must follow the employees handbook during the during working hours so everybody should read employees handbook very carefully and properly accept differences so everybody in the organization the employees should accept each other with lot of differences of their colleagues because they all belong to different backgrounds they have come from different backgrounds they have different ideologies they have different value system they have their own opinion about life they have their own set of views towards seeing things so when people learn to get along diverse workplaces can see all kinds of benefits so if employees get along with each other properly and there are a lot of benefits the organization gets as well as the employees also get benefit try to be open to your colleagues ideas and opinions and if you disagree with whatever they say have a proper discussion with them to understand their thought process so transparency is very much required and invited here so whatever they are saying whatever your colleagues are saying giving their own ideas views and opinions you must accept that or even if you disagree with that you can sit and discuss with in a discuss with the uh, with your colleague in a very calm mind you may find that when people get a chance to explain themselves you actually have a lot in common so when people are given chance to explain or uh, they are given a chance to give their ideas then you will find that yes there is some sense in that idea people of different backgrounds can learn quite a bit from one another as long as they learn to treat each other with respect so during acceptance of different types of colleagues you must also pay respect to their ideologies to you must pay respect to their value system which they carry with them then implement team building activities in the organization so it becomes the responsibility of the organization to initiate and implement team building activities and organization means the boss boss authority whoever is in charge of the system helping your team members get to know each other better can lead to more collaboration and more understanding in the workplace so there are various team building activities so where the employees come together communicate with each other they share ideas with each other and they also learn and grow with each other so this team building activity should be done by the and initiated by the boss team building activities can help colleagues 
learn about each other's personalities and work styles much better so these team building activities leads towards understanding other colleagues better understanding their personalities better their working style also so time to time team building exercises should be done also team building activity includes going out with colleagues maybe going for a picnic going for some outing maybe going for a uh, for a uh, corporate lunch corporate dinner so that are also team building activities where what happens you exchange your ideas you come together you uh, talk uh, uh, beyond the office with your colleagues so which leads to which 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 breaks the ice between the employees so it is a also ice breaking session so where employees come to know each other and come to know each other's personalities better and work styles better put expectations in writing so it is the responsibility of the authority or the boss to give the employees their target or goal in writing so if when you give it in writing then there is no chance of any miscommunication there is no chance of any misinterpretation of the target or goal or expectation make your team's expectations clear by writing them in job description so job description should be properly written and given to the employees so every employee must know what job he has to perform in the workplace and what role he has in the workplace so there is no confusion within his mind or there is no confusion within the colleagues to perform a job so having thorough job descriptions for each person can help everyone understand their responsibilities and standing in the office so target job description goal role everything has to be given in writing to each and every employee so that there is no ambiguity for the role and goal managers can also meet with their team members one on one to help them set goals and understand their expectation moving forward so here comes setting goals with discussion after discussing with the employee so there is a term for it setting goal after discussing with each and every employee that is called management by objective mbo so here what happens when the boss and the employee are sitting together and deciding the goal then the goal and role becomes clear to the particular employee make sure to take notes during this meeting so that you can confirm an employee knows that what they are responsible for completing so the authority or the boss also write down what is discussed in the meeting so that he is also sure that this work is given to such and such employee so this is very important that putting the expectation in writing then facilitate open communication as a lack of communication and misunderstandings often lead to workplace conflict finding a way to improve your communication process can be quite helpful so facilitating open communication is very important 
the boss and the subordinates should have a proper communication and open communication there should not be any lack of communication between the boss and the subordinate so who will facilitate this open communication the boss himself will facilitate this so this should be organization's culture that the culture should allow the boss for open communication the culture should allow the subordinates for open communication so here what happens as a lack of communication and misunderstanding often leads to conflict the conflict can be avoided through open communication then consider making some guidelines on how employees can communicate about certain topics with one another so here also organization design structure culture come into play so this should also make sure the organization culture should make sure that a proper guideline has to be followed during this open communication on which topic they should dis- go and discuss with the boss and on which topic they should not go and discuss with the boss so there has to be some guidelines for this if you could encourage employees to discuss project details using emails or direct messages so that they can look back on what they said so if you want to keep everything in in a written format or if you want to keep proof of everything what was discussed or what uh, uh, on which project uh, you, you have discussed with your boss then it's a better way to use email or whatsapp messages to whatever you have discussed so then you can keep a track of what you have discussed so there would be no confusion in the future and no confusion means no conflict so if there would be confusion then there would be conflict so if you want to keep Uh, the record of what you have discussed or keep the proof of what you have discussed with your boss then better you use the email or whatsapp messages for communication act as a neutral party so it becomes the authority's responsibility or boss responsibility to act as a neutral when two colleagues are in conflict when two subordinates are in conflict so boss should act as a neutral party very important thing when conflict happens act as an intermediary to the situation and try to help your team members understand each other's perspectives and emotions so boss has to remain neutral for both boss should not favor someone if there is a conflict between subordinates boss should not support one party one party means one subordinate and ignore another subordinate that is very wrong rather than making your own conclusion let the employees explain themselves and their intentions so here comes intention we'll discuss intention and later on so what the authority should do or the boss should do rather making their own conclusion they should give opportunity to the subordinates to explain themselves when working through an issue try to come up with solutions that will suit both parties so solution should be given as per both parties interest not favoring someone or supporting someone whatever decision would be taken whatever conclusion will be taken whatever solution would be given it should suit both the subordinates when people might not get exactly what they want a compromise can help diffuse any tension at work 
because if there is a conflict and a solution is given to suit the both parties one person may be unhappy with the solution but a compromising situation solution or a midway situation will help to resolve the conflict hold people accountable so holding people accountable or answerable is very important holding everyone accountable for their actions sets a good precedent in the workplace having accountability ensures that everyone is being mindful of what they do at work people should be accountable for their action and behavior at work that is very important if people do some mistake and they do not take the accountability they do not accept their mistake then it will lead to conflict and the conflict also grows so employees are to take the responsibility of their own action and behavior so this type of work structure can help people figure out what problems they are in charge of solving likewise it's a good way for people to grow from their mistakes and do better in the future so if people accept their mistake if they are they take the accountability of their mistake they will learn from their own mistake and will not repeat that mistake in future and if people do not accept their mistake and do not take accountability then they do the same mistake in future and the conflict will again arise then we will see what are the types of conflict interpersonal conflict interpersonal conflict means it arises from interpersonal relationship conflict between two individuals conflict between many individuals that is interpersonal conflict it is one of the basic types of organizational conflict that occurs between two colleagues because of differences in personal background working style and personality the primary sources of interpersonal conflict are lack of information personal differences so what is the source of conflict here lack of information is one source so this type of conflict occurs because of the breakdown in communication between two or more individuals in an organization so if there is lack of information there would be definitely goal conflict role conflict people are unaware of certain things people are unaware of certain information which should which they should get from the organization so here what happens there would be conflict between individuals in doing the work in achieving the goal then another uh, source of interpersonal conflict is personal differences so why there would be conflict between the colleagues because of personal differences also one is lack of information they do not know what is to be done they do not know how much work they should do they do not know what is their what what is their job description personal difference is another source of conflict interpersonal conflict so what is personal differences this type of organizational conflict arises because of the differences in family background traditions values experience education culture and upbringing personal differences as i told you earlier then stress environmental stress 
that also leads to interpersonal conflict so what is in, uh, environmental stress work stress if too much stress is given to employees then there would be conflict this type of organizational conflict occurs because of uncertainty due to lack of resources competitive pressure and downsizing as i said allocation of resource one example i had given earlier allocation of resource means differentiating two persons with same with same experience and background and capability at the workplace and a lot allocation of resources is different for two different person with same capabilities so that also will lead to stress environmental stress which leads to conflict then competition between two person with same capability same uh, qualification and all so if there is a competition between two colleagues that is also another example of environmental stress then target achievement that stress is also environmental stress the environmental stress can be resolved by itself after a certain period counseling and effective communication so what is the role of organization here organization must take care of these things they may counsel the people who are in stress maybe work work pressure maybe competition pressure maybe environmental stress or any kind of any sort of pressure the counseling must be done to employees to calm down the situation otherwise there would be conflict and effective communication by the boss the boss should take care of this a uh, situation very carefully then another type of interpersonal uh, uh, conflict is role incompatibility this type of conflict occurs because of the differences or incompatibility between an individual and his manager incompatibility between boss and subordinate because boss if suppose for example the boss should accept the opinions and views given by the subordinate the boss should give respect to the subordinate's working style should give respect to his opinions so if there is no respect between the boss and the subordinate both way then there will be role incompatibility and if the expectation of boss is more from the employee than his capability then that would also lead to role incompatibility so there will be mismatch between the expectation and the employee's performance that also leads to role incompatibility which ultimately leads to conflict then intrapersonal conflict intrapersonal conflict is conflict within someone's mind the conflict that arises within an individual is known as intrapersonal conflict it happens because of the difference in the vision and objective between an individual and the organizations overall vision and objective intrapersonal conflict is of three types again so what is intrapersonal conflict if the employee employee's objective is different and organization's objective is different let us take the example let us take one example the organization who has hired the employee wants the best performance from the employee best performance in achieving organization's objective but the 
employee who has come and joined here he has something in something else in his mind rather than achieving organization's objective he is more interested to achieve his own objective that is he wants to learn as much as he can and switch to a better job so here there is a conflict of objective within the employee's mind he has different objective and the organization has different objective so here comes the intrapersonal conflict so the first type of intrapersonal conflict is goal conflict goal conflict happens in an individual when achieving one goal eliminates the possibility of attaining another one it is considered complex because this goal has both negative and positive features or two or more competing goals that cause conflict so what is this i gave the example of goal conflict because the person who had joined the organization has some different goal but the organization expects some different goal so here there is a conflict in the mind of the employee so he wants to learn as much as he can he wants to utilize the resources of the organization and learn and get a uh, maximum knowledge from the organization and wants to shift that shift to a better organization but this organization is expecting so much from this employee who has come with a very high salary and this organization wants that he is the person who can take the organization to a different level but the person's intention is different so here what happens again comes the intention of people so that is goal conflict then another type of intrapersonal conflict is approach approach conflict so the this conflict occurs when individual approaches to or more mutually exclusive and adverse goals exclusive and adverse goals different goals organization goal is different individual goal is different doing the things so here approach approach conflict organization wants the working should be in a different approach and employee is doing it in a different approach that is approach approach conflict then role conflict this type of conflict occurs when an individual tries to play several roles but doesn't have the time and resources to do so so here also intrapersonal conflict arises if one person wants to look after the production department he also wants to uh, to show his bossism in hr department he again wants to show his bossism on the finance department and he convinces the board of directors that i can look after all the departments but the time is only 8 hours 8 hours or 10 hours so within the stipulated time period he is unable to manage to look after two different departments simultaneously so there also there is a, a conflict within himself so here what happens the expectation from the authorities expectation from the board of director is different and the person is is more expectation from the uh, board of directors is very high from the person but the person is not able to manage to look after all the departments simultaneously so that is also one intra personal conflict conflict from frustration this is also intrapersonal conflict 
So this type of conflict occurs when the motivated drive of an individual is blocked even before he reaches the desired goal. His inner state of deficiency then engages in an action to cover up it. Either external or internal barriers stop his attempts to reach the goal. Suppose one person is not efficient. So there would be a frustration within himself. Either he is not efficient or he, his work process is blocked somewhere by external barriers to reach his goal. Then also a kind of frustration comes. So these two things, either it is internal barrier inefficiency of the person or external barrier somewhere the work process is blocked this both lead to, con to frustration of the employee so this frustration also leads to conflict within himself so here the employee is confused and frustrated which leads to intrapersonal conflict. Then intra-group conflict. Conflict between two groups. When an individual has to work in a group and is unwilling to match the group dynamics, this leads to his exclusion from the group. So intra-group is individ between individual and group. One person's working style is not matching with that group's working style. Intergroup is conflict between two groups. Intragroup is conflict between one individual with a particular group, with the, with the same group where he is working. His working style is not matching with the group dynamics. Then he has to leave the group either or he has to be excluded from that group that is intra-group conflict again inter-group conflict is also there task interdependence if employees are having interdependence for doing the task this type of conflict occurs when two groups in an organization are dependent on each other in one way direction or for mutual benefit. The conflict is of greater magnitude because of differences in priorities and objectives. So group conflict, intergroup conflict. When one group depends on the other group for task accomplishment and the other group is not cooperating with this group to move forward. Then competition for resources. As I said, as I have given the example, groups within a company have to compete for support services, personnel, supplies, space and funds and this limited resources result in organizational conflict. So, Suppose, let us take the example of office assistant. There are four office assistants in the organization and every department needs their service. Three of the office assistants are engaged in the finance department and only one office assistant is looking after all other departments. So there would be a competition among the departments to engage the office assistants in their own department. So there arises conflict. So this is the competition for resources, which also leads to conflict. Then jurisdictional ambiguity. This type of conflict occurs because of overlapping of responsibilities and accountabilities when one group tries to take 
either credit or control for the desired activities so that if there is a jurisdictional um, dictional ambiguity if the departments are unclear about their activities and their goals one department has achieved the goal but the other department is trying to take the credit for their achievement for which there would be conflict then status struggles this type of conflict occurs when one group tries to improve its status and another group perceives it as a threat to them so status struggle is seen everywhere in every organization when one individual tries to improve his designation his status his salary while others perceive it as a threat to them so everybody is hankering for status so this status struggle also leads to organization conflict everybody wants a good good position everybody wants good salary everybody wants good designation so which leads a competition which leads towards a competition if the competition is positive then it gives a positive result if the competition is negative it leads to conflict so how the conflict the competition can be positive through this competition employees can grow they can develop learn things but if it is negative it leads towards conflict between the employees which is not a healthy sign for the organization so the various ways to manage conflict setting up a formal grievance procedure which is very important every organization should set a formal grievance procedure where employees can go and seek help from that grievance procedure they can go and lodge their complaint and then that grievance cell should take a take take up their matter try to solve the grievance all involved parties must be given the necessary time to speak so allowing people to uh, ventilate their grievances making sure that conflicts are handled in a positive manner rather than giving punishment to people trying to concentrate on the cause not on the effect of the conflict to find out the root from where the conflict has arisen then active participation and desire to find a solution which can pave the way for steps to manage and resolve the organization so these are the various ways to manage conflict in the organization so that much for today thank you so much